Okay, y'all, we got Southside Jamaica Queens in the building. We got legendary hip hop in the building. We got that legendary logo. Oh, that logo looking crazy right now. That bring me back. Please welcome my man, Fredro Star, back to Vlad TV. Fredro, what up, fam? What's shaking, man? What's popping? Yo, I'm looking at that logo. You taking me back, kid. Listen, man. <laughs> that logo years, means a man. lot. We've been to doing us. this 30. This is the 30th anniversary of Onyx. Word. We came out 93. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Rest in peace to Jam Master J. And it's 2023. It's 30 years of shit. 30 real years. 30 years. That, that we're album, going on, that legendary we're going on a crazy album. Tour, back to F up. Crazy US tour we about to pop off with. Make sure y'all. Holla at onyxhq.com. Get them tickets. We got the tour. We never, we never even toured the US like this since like Survival the Illest tour with DMX and them. So it's been no. a minute since we've been stopping on US soil. We've been overseas for like 10 years, 20 years, just rocking. How much time a year you spend overseas? A lot. A lot of the fan base is overseas, man. A lot of the fan base, they love real hip hop over there. And um, yo. The world, the world, the world is yours. Like Nas said, you know what I'm saying? People mm -hmm, should travel mm -hmm. more. It's real talk. Okay, um, I mean, I don't need to tell you. We got a whole lot going on in hip hop. Matter of fact, we got a lot going on in the world right now. It's a, it's a, it's a crazy time that we living in. And um, I hate to start these um interviews off in a bad place, but I can't not start it off in a bad place. Because everybody at this point done seen that videotape of Tyree Nichols down in Memphis. Um, another episode of police brutality. But the good thing is, you know, the cops, they're on video and it looks like they're being brought to justice. First and foremost, did you get a chance to see the video? Yeah, I, I tried to watch it, but I couldn't watch the full video. But yeah, I saw what was going on and... um. It's terrible. It's terrible, man. It's just terrible. Nah, it really is. You know what's crazy? Because you, I was talking to Vlad earlier today, and he asked me if I watched it, and I said I might be the only person who hasn't watched it because I just couldn't even bring myself. Because I was asking him, I'm like, yo, is this thing up there with the Rodney King? And he was like, nah, it's worse. I was like, you know what? My spirit been in a bad place. I haven't even watched that video yet. Very bad, very bad, man. It's very sad, man, what, what they did to that to that man. It's, it's not good, man. It's like, and they black cops too. Oh my god. You know what I'm saying? Like, that that's what make it, that's what make it worse. You know what I'm saying? It's like, how could you do that to a black brother like that? Like, somebody like, this is what we've been fighting for. This is what we've been marching for, and you gonna go ahead and do that? Crazy. That's like, that's that's crazy, man. But it it, it kind of brought me to, to the movie um Minister Society. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. When the black cop was like, I hate you niggas. You know what I'm saying? It, it brought me right to that scene. Like, it's been happening. Like, it's been happening. KRS one, black cop, black. Yep, why do you think yep. he made that record? Black cops bit, yo, there is no. Black or white cop. It's you just a cop. You blue. You know what I'm saying? That's it's nah, it's you, been like that. I mean because real niggas ain't I'm gonna keep it real. Real niggas ain't becoming cops. Mm. I mean, you probably got a few. I know, I know a few, I know some cops that's real, but you know, for the most part, man, that shit that shit is that shit. That shit, that shit is sad, man. Nah, it's sad. Like you said, the fact that it's five black cops to begin with, the fact that this man, what is he, something like 6'2", but he, I mean, he weighed all of 140-something pounds. All, yo, the dude got vans on, man. The, I mean, you look, look, you could just tell like he wasn't no street dude. You could just, you know that. Off top, you know what I'm saying? The way he was talking, like, you could tell, like, there was no need for that. That's, that shit was uncalled for. That shit was fucked up. And I yeah. hope, you know, they get what's, what's coming to him. Nah, it looked like, you know, and this is, the funeral was yesterday. 
you know, the vice president was at the funeral. Uh, all types of politicians were at the funeral. This thing is not just getting national press, but it's getting worldwide press. Right. It ain't nowhere in the world that these cops is getting off. Right. And more important, you yeah. Let me just ask you because I'm even thinking about those cops was wearing body cameras. What can make, even in your opinion, what can make these cops so bold, knowing that they have body cameras on them? They been bold, man. They been they been bold. Body cameras or not, they feel like if the, listen, if he wouldn't have died, they wouldn't be in the trouble they at. Probably, they probably would have swept it under the rug. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. since he died, you know what I'm saying? It's like, okay, now we can't sweep it under the rug. Now we got to, the world got to see it because they've been had the tapes. They just let, then they knew when they released the tapes, the reaction it was going to get because they, they already knew. No, they was very strategic in the way that they did everything from the gate. They hit them with the charges first. They let 48 hours go by. Then they released the video because they knew if they released that video first. This whole country would have been in an uproar. Right. But they wanted to show everybody, you know what? We got a handle on this thing. They're going to be brought to justice. So now we're going to let you see this video and you could be outraged, but just know we already on top of it. I don't think it was no accident that they released the video 48 hours after they um, charged them officers with that, with, with his murder. Facts. You're right. You're right. You know, speaking of that, I mean, you from NY have, and you're a, a public figure for at least the last 30 years of your life. Have you ever had... And I know this is a silly question to ask, but have you ever had any crazy run-ins with the cops? Of course. Of co I think every black man in America is going to answer yes to that question. <laughs> Not for real, though. It's like because, and I'm going to keep it real, the running I had was a black cop. Where at? New York or it LA? Was in Queens when I was young. This is before, I, this is like 19 years old. You know what I'm saying? It was a black cop who was being very aggressive. You know what I'm saying? But um, it's been happening for years, man. This shit is it's just, it's just it's sad, bro. You know? But we seeing we seeing it firsthand on camera because a lot of sh a lot of shit don't don't get seen, man. Cause a lot of dudes, they they get it's police brutality, but they don't die. So it's Correct. not a lot of, you know what I'm saying? They sweep it under the rug all the time. So now, in this case, they can't do that. Nah, it's just insane to me. Black cop, white cop, no, no matter what you are, how, you know, me and you were talking off cameras. You can't get away with nothing these days. Mm. It's cameras everywhere. You would think the fact that, number one, is cameras on every street corner, um, everybody has their own home security, so you're caught there. Everybody walking around with phones in their hands, and they film everything, so you're caught there. You would think that these cops would think twice, three times, four times. Like, they, they, the way that they uh, interact with people right. would be a whole lot different knowing, yo, somebody, it's a high likelihood that somebody right now is filming this. And to think that... It hasn't changed. It's how much, crazy yo, how to many, me. How many? How much shit you see on the internet? Cops beating somebody up or slant the little. The girl was walking with her friends. They sl slant the little girl. Nothing ever happens. You see the video, but they still got their job. Whatever. They think they could get away with this shit. Yo, when they when they pulled when they pulled them over, they was aggressive off top. Like, he didn't mm. say nothing to trigger nothing. Like, they came to the car aggressive off top. Like, yo, get out. That's how cops be. They be, they think this all the time. They do the same shit. Damn, my heart goes out to his family. It really does. Um, his mother, his father, they clearly heartbroken. Um, yo, the world you know, is heartbroken. 
Yeah, you're right. The world is heartbroken. Okay, switch topics with me for a second. Um, it looked like that YSL Rico case is underway. They're saying this case is going to last, you know, and I don't even know how true this is, but they're saying that this thing might, the trial itself might last for a year. They having a hard time finding jurors. Gunner recently took a plea deal. You know, everybody coming at him. Like, let's start there. What's your thoughts on even him taking that plea deal? I'm just, look, look I, I'm, it's, it's, I mean, it's kind of like every man for self. Once you, once you get behind them walls, it's every man for self because everybody got different principles and different characters and niggas ain't staying on, this, on the same shit. One nigga was like, one nigga girl was like, yo, sh you better do whatever you got to do to get home to your daughter or your, you know what I'm saying? Like everybody got their own shit going on. So, I mean, he did what he had to do. It's, it, it, ain't, it ain't the same like when we came up, man. It, it's no, there's no coals no more. It's, it's like whatever. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's like every man for self. That's the way I see it. So, so let me ask you, even with that mentality, right now it's every man for self. Is he getting a bad rap on social? Because social media is killing him. Um, people coming out. He said, yo, I didn't snitch. Hold up. But he Next did. question. He's still dating that girl? I don't even know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what they do. He might be like, yo, I can't stay. I got to get out. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what I got waiting for me? <laughs> Like, I'm just, you know what I mean? It's like niggas is niggas is back to living their life, doing what they gotta do. But to me, I don't I don't know. I'm just outside looking in. He didn't look like he was. I don't know. Like I don't know. I don't know his involvement, how deep he runs with the situation. But there was a lot of yes, ma'am, and yes, ma'am, and yes, ma'am going on. So yeah, no, nah, I mean. He said out of his own mouth, he was like, yo, uh, YSL is a criminal organization. Mm. I, that don't, that don't, I mean, I guess technically that's not snitching, but it no, don't that's, really. No, that's um, snitching. What do you mean technically that's not snitching? That's snitching. <laughs> what are you talking about? Didn't he just say <laughs> you just said he said out of his own mouth, they are a street gang. That's, of course, that's snitching. But in this day and age. What is snitching? Everybody doing it, right? It's like yo, they after they after they after the they after the head of the snake, right? Yep. So yep. the body is like yo, if they after the head of the snake, then why should I go down? But you just asked the realest question. In this day and age, what is snitching? Because everybody doing it. Everybody doing it. Right, like it, I saw, I saw Funk Flex. He put out a um a post, and he was like, "Yo, six nine, send me, send me your new music." He was like, "Yo, why I'm not pay, playing your records?" And everybody doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. Like, like I stopped playing your records because you snitch. Right, but everybody else is snitching, and I'm still playing their records. Like, send me what you got that's new. Crazy. <laughs> Flex is crazy. <laughs> I saw that too. Flex you saw crazy. Yeah, I saw that. I saw that. But um, it's it's no loyalty out here, man. You know, everybody everybody is in this game to win. Nobody wants to lose. And if you in jail for that time, you losing, losing mm -hmm. what you used to, losing your freedom. You losing. You ain't in jail winning. So niggas want to win. And if niggas was winning already, they going to try to get back to winning again. Yeah. You yeah. got niggas that's losing snitching. Like, it don't even make a difference. Niggas don't care. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, <laughs> it's like, you know, you give a nigga a can of Pepsi and some cigarettes, man. Nigga, you know, nigga tell the whole world. Beretta, Man. I used to watch this TV show called Beretta back in the days. I'm, I'm a little older than these niggas. And, 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 the, and the intro was, don't do the crime if you can't do the time. Don't do it. That shit <laughs> stuck with me. They need to bring that song back out, like, for real, because 
niggas getting in jail. As soon as they get to jail, it's like, yo, like, nigga, why'd you do the crime? How That's about so that? That's so true. That's so true. It's bad enough they locking niggas up for nothing. So you want to do something and get locked up, then that's on you. Yo, I don't know. I mean, here's the flip side. The trial is underway. They're looking for jurors. They're saying they're having a hard as hell time finding jurors because this trial could last a year. Right. Take yourself out of this for a second. Would you, would you be even willing to sit on a trial for a year? You ain't got no choice? Under any circumstance? You what, what you gonna do? Say you wanna speed it up? Like, what, what, I'd be what, like, choice, nah, do, I, I, what choice would I have, actually have though? Like, <laughs> yo, they would have to lock me up, uh, they do something. Give, give me that, give me that two, two, three weeks in jail, whatever they gonna give me. I can't, remember, remember the OJ trial was something like 11 months or some craziness? Crazy. Like, I can't give up my life for, for a year to be sitting on some trial. Like, it, nowhere in the world. I know they're going to have a hard time finding 12 jurors and then about six or seven backups to be sitting there for a full year, commit to a year of their life. That's going to be hard. Right. I mean, that got to be some somebody who who don't have a life. Pray for the young brother, man. Hope, hope them brothers come home, man. You know, nobody deserves to be in that position. That's real. Um, you know what's the crazy thing is, uh, you know, they're saying even if he gets convicted on one of those RICO charges, it's a 20-year mandatory minimum. Damn. Mm. He's looking at a lot of time, bro. Talented kid too, man. Like talented. He he was he was very talented. Like, I like his music at first. I was like, yo, he's dope though. You know what I'm saying? Like his melodies, like very talented kid, man. And it's just a shame, man. You know, this Rico bullshit. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's people doing far worse. You know, that's what, you know. But, you know, I'm just looking on the outside in, so I don't know the particulars. Nobody knows the particulars. The only people who know that is the feds. Mm -hmm. The niggas who got them in that position. They know more than we know, so all we could do is speculate. Everybody's speculating of what's going yeah, on. You know what I'm saying? You know what's really sad? The most saddest thing out of all this, you, you, you. It's it's a million rappers out there. Mm. It's it's a million rappers. Not all of them are gonna break through the way you did, the way um, Thugger did. And and when you break through, the goal is to get out the streets. Mm. The goal is to get money, take care of your family. It's it's a sad thing to think that. This is a young man, young, multi-millionaire. It's a thin line, though, between the streets and hip-hop. You know what I'm saying? It's it's all connected. Because most rappers, most rappers come from the inner city, the hood, ghetto, whatever you want to call it. And their friends are people from the streets. And it's hard mm -hmm. to just say, yo, I can't be friends with this person that helped me along the way. You know what I'm saying? This nigga might have knocked the nigga out at my first concert for me. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got niggas around you that came up with you. It's, it's hard to it's hard to shake that shit. Like, where you going? Where you going? Where you going? To the moon? So how you even balance it? Because it, the goal again is to get out yeah, the streets. The, ba but the balance. It, you, the, the way you balance it is is to to, to the niggas you start off with. You got to make sure they're official. As much as possible. You know what I'm saying? Like when we started with Onyx, the niggas I was moving with was official. Like Sticky, my cousin. Sun C is my, that's my, like these is my, you know what I'm saying? My family type shit. We didn't have a whole, of course we rolled with thousands of people, but you learn how to move. That's why, you know, you, you gotta just make moves. You gotta make moves. If you stay in that same, that same area where you came up, then that's what you're gonna have. If you move somewhere, you're, you're light in the low, you know what I'm saying? Only a few niggas get to make the move with you. You can't take the whole hood with you. But you got to yeah. balance it because you want to come back to the hood. You want to be respected in your hood. You want to, you know what I'm saying? It's, 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 it's a thin line. Nah, it really is. And you know what's crazy? I just thought about this. Uh, me and you was talking earlier about cameras being everywhere. 
did you see that video of his man, another one of the YSL members, handing him a perk in court? <laughs> That's stupid. That, no. that, that had to be the most <laughs> dumbest shit I've ever seen in my life. Like, my nigga, a perk in court? Really? <laughs> in court. That's that's crazy. That's 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 like he don't give a, that whoever did that don't give a fuck. Yo. But all but all, all Thugger guy says, yo, I, listen, I thought the nigga was giving me a handshake. I didn't I didn't tell a nigga to do that. They ain't got nothing on that's what his lawyer was like, yo, he ain't got nothing to do with that. Yo, I can't even believe homeboy did like I'm like and it wasn't even smooth about it. It no. wasn't like it, it was clear as day. First of all, he brought attention to himself the way he walked in the court. Like, they was like, you know what I'm saying? He ain't even do a smooth, like, yo, what was that? You know what I mean? Like, just brazen. Oh, man. All right. Yeah, I mean, um, ho hopefully everything worked out for them down there. Um, I mean, that's like, that, that, that's going to be, that's going to be one heck of a trial. I'm sure all eyes is going to be glued to that trial. He like the new Tupac in a way, like, you know, it's very talented, but caught up in some legal issues. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's been happening to rappers for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. It has been. You know? I pray it work out for him. I mean, because he looking at, he looking at a lot of time. And, and like you said, they want the head of the snake. That's right. what they really want. Yeah. That's how it always is. Okay. Um... Let's stay in this whole court thing, this legal system for a second. I hate the Tory courts, Lanes. man. I hate court dates, man. I got tour <laughs> dates. Fuck court dates, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> Straight up. Uh, yo, we, can, we, we, we got to talk about this Tory Lays Meg Thee Stallion oh, trial man. that just passed. You, you, know, you know we got to talk about that. Wow. What's your thoughts on that? Pray, pray for the whole situation, man. The young lady got shot. I saw that video where she was really, you know what I'm saying, like really upset, crying and all that shit. That shit is fucked up. Um, where did the gun come from? You know what I'm saying? Like, exactly. How did a gun come into play with this whole shit? Like, you know, it was a fucked up situation, but the gun should have never came into play. Especially when you're dealing with females. Like, for what? Like, what is the, like, what's the threat? That's, that's, for, that's for a threat. I did a movie called Strapped and shit. The little, I was selling guns to the little kid. I said, now, now this ain't no toy. Make sure you don't play around with this shit. You see what I'm saying? Yep. Niggas thought it was a toy playing around. Ha, ha, ha. Boom, bang. You know what I'm saying? Now shit is real. Niggas don't understand decisions they make in life could be, you don't think it's a big decision, but the repercussions could be very, very big. You know what I'm saying? When the gun came into play, he didn't, nobody thought they would be in jail. It was ha, 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 probably. You know what I'm saying? Niggas drunk, whatever. Mm -hmm. Like, I hope, I mean, it's fucked up. Now he got to fight his way out that. Yo, you know what's crazy is Tony Yayo says something that's so real. I want to get your thoughts on this. Um, he was basically like, yo, if you shot somebody and they survive and they take the stand, do not take that thing to trial. Mm. You don't go to trial if the person you shot is still around and they're going to take the stand against you. Right. Just cop. Just take that plea, do whatever you can do, get the least time you can, but don't go to trial. Right. Where I'm from, if somebody say you shot them, you usually found guilty. So like where we from, like where I'm from, like I would have copped out. Cause somebody saying that I shot them and they willing to take the stand. Right. I'm just like, yo, I'm not gonna take it to trial cause I'm gonna do more time. I'm wasting the state money. So me, I'm gonna cop out. Should have took that advice. I don't know what happened in that truck, but he ain't get sitting shit though, right? What'd you say? But he ain't get sitting shit though, right? No, he getting sentenced. Um, matter of fact, he getting sentenced this month. But February. hold on, hey, doesn't he have an appeal coming up? Okay, that's a good question. He just hired um, Jose Baez. Right. Now this is the same dude who got. You remember Casey Anthony? 
Yeah. She's the one who was um accused of killing her two year old daughter and got away with it. Yep. He that, got her. Now that was. But anyway, yeah, he has an appeal coming up, so he probably won't get sentenced yet, right? No, nah, he's getting sentenced. You are gonna get sentenced regardless. Okay. The appeal is the appeal. Okay. So he's getting sentenced this month, mm. and um, you know, now he got another talented Jose brother, Bayer. man. Very talented, man. Like. Super talented. Very talented. You know, it's crazy because Vlad predicted a year ago. Here's the deal, right? A lot of people, the 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 the, the public was actually on Tory Lane's side. At like, first. He, correct. Word. You you're right. But at the at the same time, me personally, I wasn't on nobody's side. The side I was on was how did she get shot? Like, damn, like, I felt bad for her. How could I feel bad for anybody else? Nobody else got shot. Yep. So, yep. you know, I wasn't taking sides, but I felt, you know, felt bad for her. That's, come on, she's a superstar too. Like, that's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, she she's a superstar. Like you said, she's the one that got shot. And at the end of the day, she was like, he did it. Mm. So it was almost like he, he had a losing case before before he even took it to trial. But what made him think he could beat it though? You gotta ask him that. Maybe one day we'll sit down with him and, and ask him that question. I don't know. Cause I mean, cause if I did it and she said I did it, then you know what? <laughs> it's kind of, it's, that's the facts. Okay, so so you just asked a real question. What made him think he could beat it? He said, yo, I didn't do it. Like, like he legit said, I didn't do it. Mm. So, so some, something ain't right. Something ain't right. We know something happened in that truck. She clearly got shot. But like I said, where did the gun come from? I don't think they figured that out yet. How did I gonna figure I don't it think out? They, they didn't figure it out. Wait a minute. I, th I think, I think, I think they said it was the security guards. Hmm. Hmm. The nigga that went missing? The, the nigga that went missing? Correct. <laughs> <laughs> that Yo, that nigga said, I'm out. Fuck trial. Did they find that nigga yet? <laughs> is that nigga, is he still missing? <laughs> He on the back of a milk cart. I don't know where he at. Oh, shit. Speaking about missing, man, there's these three rappers that's missing. I was, because, you know, I, I tune in to CNN before I tune in to Worldstar. I'm just, you know, I'm, a, you know, like, and they got these three rappers from Detroit who are missing. You heard about that? I heard about it, yeah. That's crazy, right? It. That's No, yeah. that's kind of crazy. That's insane. That's, you know, that's that's crazy to me. But um, back to the Tory Lane shit, man. He got an uphill battle. He got an uphill well, battle, man. For his appeal, I mean, he putting together his own little dream team. He got death row lawyer David Kenner. He on the case. And like I said, Jose Baez, who got um Casey Anthony off. Yo, when you want to know what's crazy? Jose Baez charge his retainer. Take a guess what his retainer is. 50K. A month, a year? What are we talking? It will have to be a monthly retainer, right? Yeah. Yeah. So you saying 50, 50K a month? Probably. It's a lot of time in the court system. And, and I hate lawyers. Because you got to pay whether you lose or you win. You still got to pay. You still got to pay him. Check it. This man's retainer, $200,000 a month. Who? The lawyer? Two, yes. I'm going to law One school. Of those I'm lawyers. going to law school, son. <laughs> I'm done with this hip hop shit. <laughs> See me in six years, man. I'm, I'm, yo, listen. Listen. Nigga. $200,000 a I'm month. I'm passing the bar exam, bro. I'm, I'm out. <laughs> I'm, I'm done. 
Nah, it's crazy. I mean, um, and, and like you said, to your point, whether he win or he lose, it don't so, even wait, matter. So wait, hold up. So his monthly retainer is t- is two hundred thousand. He didn't start using him yet. No, he started using him. How many months he, he been working so far? I, I have no idea. Damn, I have no idea. All I know is two hundred thousand dollars a month is his retainer, win or lose. Mm. Huh. Hope everything work out for him. Well, he sold a lot of records. He did. He did. He got a couple of hours. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the deal. Here's the deal. I mean, I know hindsight is always twenty twenty, but if you was going to spend that kind of money, you should have bought him on in the first place. How about not do it or not getting yourself in that situation? <laughs> like, Yo, you talking. like yeah, That's that grown man talk you talking. Like, that's that grown man talk that's why you're I talking these, right there. One decision can end up, and you don't even think about it when you do it. A lot of these kids don't think about it when they do it, but as soon as they get to jail, they think, oh my God, I got to get, I got to spend $200,000 on a lawyer. Like, niggas ain't built for that shit. Niggas want to get the fuck out of there. Niggas is snitching. Nope. Whatever the fuck they got to do to get out of that situation, they will do it. Niggas will try to break out of jail, nigga. Niggas, That's real. niggas sh- cutting the motherfucking cement like this, nigga. Niggas trying to break out. <laughs> Straight up. Niggas, niggas is swimming in the, the water with sharks, nigga, to, to get out of jail. And say, fuck it, I'm going to risk it. And all that, <laughs> and if they would have just took five seconds and just thought, like, yo, before I, before I pull this trigger, before I do this thing, right. Let me rethink this thing. Rethink that. Because I'm not built for I'm not built for the repercussions that come with it. Yeah. Um. Okay. Staying on that subject for a minute. I mean, did you get a chance to to see that NBA Young Boy interview he did? I think it was with Billboard. Yo, NBA Young Boy is L, yo. He L. Like, far as his music. I listen to it and it's um, it's, it's good. It's good. Like, you know, I like boom bap. You know, I like real hip hop. But his music is pretty, pretty good. Somebody put me up on him and I was like, "You like NBA Young?" He's like, "Yo, this is the shit." And they made me listen to this shit and I was like, "All right, yeah." All right. You know what I'm saying? But when I heard the interview, he just seemed so vulnerable. Like the way he mm-hmm. speaks. Very smart brother though. And I Very feel what smart. he's saying. I feel what he's saying too. You know, as far as like putting music out that's destructive or, you know, we've done that. Onyx, we throw your guns in the air. You got to live with that though. He has to live with what he did because it came from something that was real. Cause what was leaving when I hear his music, it sounds real. Mm-hmm. He sounds like somebody really going through something. Like when you hear his music, he don't, he's different than a lot of these other rappers. You know what I'm saying? You can hear that in his voice. You know what I'm saying? He don't do a lot of interviews. You don't really see him in, you know, doing a lot of shit for kicks for the interview. And he's he's kind of like a low key type of nigga, but he's selling mm-hmm. a lot mm-hmm. of records and got a cult following. You know what I'm saying? How I know because somebody told me, yo, this is the shit. I was like, NBA, it was like, yo, check this shit out. I was like, nigga made me listen to that shit. And I was like, the shit is all right. Nah, I mean, watching that interview, you come to realize a couple of things. Number one, that the person you hear on those records and the person you saw in that interview, you almost not know that they the same people. Like, he's so reserved, he's introspective, he almost come across shy. Like, 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 you know, in even one part in the video, he was so real, and to your point, he was so vulnerable, he was like, yo, I'm scared of people. Like, people frighten me. Hmm. Like, and, and, and I know he been home now, I think for the last year and a half, he on house arrest or something like that. Right. So I don't know if him being out of the public eye and not able to travel and all that stuff just got him zoned out in a different place. He's in Utah. 
So I think maybe he's becoming a Mormon or something. Or I heard about something. that. Like, I heard about that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's 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 called life. Life is about a journey. I like 30 years in hip hop, I know it's a journey, man. It's a journey you go through life. He's going through his journey right now. When you start here and you go here, it's a different place. You're in a different place. He's in a different age, a different place. He's in Utah. Around different people, you going through journey. You go through your journey. Now let's see where this journey takes him. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, that's just what life with anybody. You might meet meet somebody, and your and your and your and your journey goes this way. Like you don't you don't know what road you going to in life. You just gotta live it, and once you live it, you accept it. He accepted it, and he's a different person. He's not this, like you said. He he seems like a different person. That on those right, it, it is a different person. He mm -hmm. has a different mind mind state. So if you got a different mind state, you're not the same person. You the same physical person, but not in your mind. So you're different. He's not the same person. You can hear it, like you said. Yeah. You change. Yeah. Everybody change. I change. Uh, everybody should change. Nobody should stay this. Changes for the for the better. Changes for. For the better in life, nobody should stay the same. Damn, you talking that grown man talk? I love. See, these are common conversations I love having because I always say, if you the same person you was five years ago, ten years ago, yo, something wrong. Right. We we supposed to change. Right. We not supposed to be the same people physically. Yes, but if God grants you life. You supposed to grow, evolve, go through experiences and come out on the other side with a new perspective. Right. So a lot of people be stuck, stuck where they are. Like I said, people need to travel more, get out, and see different things. Yo, like I said, we've been in, I, yo, I think I've been over like 200 countries, bro. Like for real, like I see shit different. I talk to different people, eat different food. You know what I'm saying? Smoke different weed. We 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 worldwide with this shit, you know what I'm saying? Matter of fact, we got an album called Worldwide Takeover coming out, man. Onyx, we did an album with mad rappers all over the world. Nobody never did that shit on one album, straight up because we not just stuck in one place. And be, young boy, he's going to a whole nother place in life. So let's see what happens. I don't know about the Mormon rap shit. <laughs> I you know <laughs> he probably say they don't want to be a rapper no more. The nigga got over a billion streams. He probably don't even need to do that shit no more. Yeah. I mean, having to do it, I don't think he's in that place no more. Like, like, do I have to write rhymes? Do I have to rap? Nah, I don't think he's... The, I think... And here's the crazy... Like, he said the, he ran at, out at of the, rhymes, right? I, I, I seen that. He said, yo, I ran out of rhymes. I mean, I think last year he put out something like eight albums, full-length albums. Crazy. Like, that's crazy. And, and and I'm not talking eight singles. He probably not. He probably not writing that shit. Probably just in there saying what he feel. That's why when I heard it, I said this shit sound real. Like you know, it sounds like you could feel it. So let me ask you, because you you touch you touched on this earlier. E even for somebody like yourself who's evolved, um, you a father. You thirty years in hip hop. You a grown man. Mm -hmm. Do you regret any of the lyrics that y'all put out? You you mentioned throw your guns. I don't regret nothing. It is what it is. I can't change that. I still perform throw your guns at every concert. No, I don't regret anything. It is what it is, and I hope hopefully people can see the difference and not use what rappers say in their records to fuel what they do in life, because that shouldn't have nothing to do with what you do in life. If you're going to do some fucked up shit, don't blame it on a Tupac record. Don't blame it on some Onyx. Don't do that. You did that because you wanted to do it. You might have been playing that music in the background. It might have been going through your head, but still, you have to be responsible for everything that you do. So when we put out music like that, I don't feel like I'm responsible for anybody doing anything out of their character. Mm-hmm. Okay. 
2023, would you record that song today? No. I would do Throw Your Guts Part 2. <laughs> <laughs> you feel me? Like, I mean, you know, this hip-hop shit is, is an expression. Everybody should be able to express themselves. And, and that's just what it is, man. This is art. It's just art, man. It's just music. That's all it is. Just like you go, you go to the movies. Al Pacino's still playing gangster shit, right? He's still. I just seen an Irishman. He's still on some gangster shit. That's his character. Onyx, we mm -hmm. we we when we do music, we 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 in our character. This is what we do. You know what I'm saying? I'm sure Al Pacino is a nice guy. You know, I'm sure he ain't. No mobster nigga in real life. Maybe he is. I don't know. But you know what I'm saying? But he's just a he's just an actor. Acting like yep, that. Yep, and he does a yep. very good job. And you think it's real. That's why he gets paid the money he gets paid. Cause you believe it. But you gotta know the difference though. You know what I'm saying? True. That's real talk. Yeah, we we 50 years of hip-hop. You keep saying 30 years you've been in it. You've been in it the majority of your life. Mm -hmm. But hip-hop for people like me and you, it's been our entire life. Right. You know, hip-hop is celebrating its 50th anniversary this year. Uh, shout to Cool Herc. Shout to the, to, to the legends, Grandmaster Flash, all of the guys who came before us. Um, but it was an interesting conversation. I, I don't know the name of the podcast, but it's Shaq's podcast. And he had Jamal Crawford on it. Mm. And Jamal Crawford said he feels that Jay-Z's impact hmm. in the world of hip-hop supersedes Eminem's album sales. So Jay might not have sold as many albums as Eminem, but his impact is greater than Eminem's in the world of hip-hop. Now that What's right your there is a great debate. Because they both have very powerful impacts on hip hop and not just music, other ventures, other ways they affected the culture, fashion, movies. They did different things, but they're both impactful. So Jamal Crawford, one of the illest ball handlers in the game, but his perspective is, is his perspective. You know what I'm saying? Ask that to one of these white kids in Detroit about Eminem and Jay-Z and then you're going to see the answer you get. Everybody got their own opinion. Let me ask mm -hmm. you a question. You like Mercedes Benz or BMW better? I'm a Mercedes dude. Okay. But it depends who you ask because okay, I love them both, actually. That's what I'm saying. It's the same shit. Two, same thing. Two, yep. two great brands. The S550, the 750, which one you taking? It's like, I don't give a fuck. I jump with either of them shits. Them shits is popping. Yep. Jay-Z, yep. Eminem, it's the same shit. You, you can't, there's no debate on that. They just both have powerful impacts on hip hop. Nah, it, it is so true, everything you said. This is the great debate in hip hop. It really is. Everybody, depending on who you ask, they gon' they gon' have their own opinion and they gonna stick up for the person that impacted their life more. Now for Needless me to say my perspective, I would say for where I'm from, Jay-Z had a bigger impact to me. Musically first. Like I gravitate to Jay-Z's music more than I do Eminem. Eminem is a great artist, always represent Onyx. Lo uh, he's dope, no question. But I'm from Southside, Jamaica, Queens, Brooklyn. I'm a Brooklyn nigga, so you see, you see what what I'm a, you see what I'm a like. But I can't take his Eminem's impact saying that's bigger than Jay Z. That's I can't say that. Mm -hmm. Eminem put Last Days in Eight Mile. That's directly to me because I did that beat Last Days. Yeah. So yep. his impact to me. I'm feeling that shit too. 
there's different parts of why I feel like, you know what I mean? It's like this, man. Mercedes, BMW. It's to me, it's even, it's even. Needless to say, his boy 50 Cent, he jumped out there and held his man um Eminem down. But I'ma jump in like, the nah. I'm me personally, I'ma jump in the BM. I'm a BM type nigga. I, I I'll take the 750 over the S5. It and I have both of them. So I'm, that's just me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nah, it's a great debate. You know, you know what's crazy? Cause you brought up, you brought up um that joint, that song. You produced that song last in days. eight mile, right? Yeah. 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 So you had a chance to work firsthand with, with M. Exactly. Dope. Matter of fact, Sticky, did don't Sticky, didn't he have a song with um Eminem? He got, he got two songs with what Eminem. What if I was white? He got What If I Was White with Eminem, and he got Remember Me with Eminem, RBX. Because people don't know, Sticky was about to get signed to Aftermath. Oh. Sticky was living in LA for about two months. They had him up in a hotel and he was in he was in a bidding war with Universal. And Dre had him working on some joints. That's how he got with uh Eminem to do the RBX record, because he was around the camp. I was around the camp too. You know, I was there. You know, I was already in LA doing Moesha and doing the movie shit. So I was already in LA anyway. So when he got with Dre, you know, he was in the studio with them a lot. A lot, a mm -hmm. lot of studio sessions. You know what I'm saying? So Shout to Dre, Eminem. Yeah, why that deal never went through? This is the first time I'm even hearing that. Um, Universal was, they basically doubled the money, the upfront money. And at the time, you know, being young, you know, when niggas talking, when the niggas talking M is just like, you know, you, you gonna gravitate towards the money. I told them, I told Sticky, nigga, fuck the money. Get with Dre, bro. I'm telling you. Get with Dre. Because we was already rocking with them niggas already. We was already in the mix. You know what I'm saying? I think he said Sticky Album will probably come out a year later or something. And Sticky wanted to like rush his project. But I think the move with Dre would have been way iller. But the Universal move was dope. You know what I'm saying? It was dope. He did his thing. Great album. Um, Black Trash. Classic. And that's another thing. I just saw this, this 50... I don't know who made this list. The 50th best rappers list, right? Mm-hmm. Listen, I ain't gotta be on the list. I know I'm nice and a lot of them niggas on the list. I know that. But Sticky Fingers not on the, the best 50 rappers is, is kind of like bugged out to me. Mm -hmm. Jada Kiss was like 46. 46 out of 50 Jada Kiss? Yo, Yo he who? was really 46 on that list? Yes. Rick Ross was number oh 50 God. on the list. Who wrote this list? <laughs> Who wrote this <laughs> shit? Jada Kiss 46? Crazy. That's crazy. That's crazy. I'm just, I'm going to speak up. That's crazy. And sticking out on the list. Come on, son. Out of 50 rappers, Sticky would burn half them niggas. I would burn half them niggas, but stick, you know, stick is that. He's that dude, you know what I'm saying? That's why yep. he's on records with Eminem. And I think the record he did with Eminem, or my, my partake, I think he bodied Eminem on that particular record. That's just my opinion. And I'm not being biased. I just think he, I think Eminem put that cop, that, that competitive thing inside of Sticky and he came off with one of the illest verses ever. You know what I'm saying? And... Eminem brought that out of him. See, people forget just how dope and how lyrical Sticky was, or is for that matter. Exactly. People forget. Exactly. See, you, you saying Eminem is one of the best rappers ever. The nigga rocking the Onyx shirt in the, the documentary. Sticky, one of my favorite rap, he's always saying that. You feel what I'm saying? So if he thinks he's... If he's part of his favorite rappers, how he not on the 50 list? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We should let Eminem write the 50 list. Yo, speaking of writing, let me, let me word this properly. If you don't write your rhymes, or if you have a ghostwriter for some of your rhymes, can you even make a top 50 list in your opinion? Yes. 
Hell yeah. Because, yo, you can't do everything by yourself, man. You can't. It's impossible. Every rapper that you know got a nigga in the studio with him saying some shit, giving him shit. It's, that's the way it is. A lot of niggas don't get credit. Niggas might get a dinner at, uh, you know, catch steak or something, you know, like, but they don't get the mm -hmm. credit. That's my man, yo, give him a drink. For Wolf. You might, he might say some shit like, oh shit, let me write that down. No publishing. You know, a lot of niggas got ghostwriters. You know, and, and if you if you if you a real rapper and you got a lot of shit, you not, you not, the door's not closed to work with somebody that you respect they pen. You know what I'm That's saying? That's real. That's real. You know, th this been and here's another one. This been a great debate for years. You know, but but what people don't know, the public don't know, is a lot of their favorite artists, they got ghostwriters, at least for different parts of their song. Right. If it ain't a whole song, because I can't tell you how many times I walked in studio, and I won't say no names, and dudes is listening to the reference tracks, getting ready question, to spit though. the verse. So when they do the reference track, at the end result, when you play the reference track and you play... The artist track, which one sound better? The artist track. That's why they ghostwriters. A lot of these ghostwriters, they don't have the voice, so they can't come across right. You know what I'm saying? But the pen is there, and, and they know their position. And say, you know what? Let me, let me give it to somebody that could take it to that level. To make that's your real. shit sound better than what, even what you said. Come on, that's, that takes skills too. Okay, so uh, clearly you know one of the most uh, famous, I guess I would say, ghost writers out there, Quint Miller. Mm -hmm. Everybody know Quint. The guy with one Bless. leg. He got one leg and all that, right? He got one leg. Right. Yep. He's he sat down with Vlad. Mm. He said that um he did some writing for Nas on Queen's Disease Three, right? And um. Uh, you know, Sheik Looch, shout to Sheik Looch. He was just basically like, yo, Quentin writing for Drake and Kanye, that's one thing, but not Nas. Like, he couldn't even come to terms with the fact that, that Quentin would even write so much of a bar for Nas. Hmm. I respect Nas and love Nas like any other rapper in this world, you know, and to get an opportunity to to work with him, man. And, you know, he's telling me, yo, man, you, you one of the dopest new rappers I heard. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, I'm taking this in. This is a great thing. You get the opportunity to work with somebody and then people find out and then they, they tear him down because he worked with you rather than look at you like, damn, you must be dope. Because that's what you expect. But it don't turn out that way. It turned out they get they get burnt up, so then they looking at you crazy, and then they want nothing to do with you at all. Kanye says he don't he don't be writing all that shit. He act right. like it's, it's known that he don't write all that shit. Nas, I can't, I can't, I don't, I'm not accepting that. I accept that the brother Quentin probably wrote the chorus. You must know some know. shit the way you're looking. No, no, I, I, must, no, I don't know. No, yeah. no, because I asked him, I asked him, I said, what exactly did you do on that song that you have credit on? He said, I'm not going to say I worked on it. And then that was it. Yeah. It was him, Nas, and Hip Boy working on the song together. His yeah. name's on the credits. I don't I mean, listen, Nas, Nas is, me and him are the same age. I think Nas is like 49. I mean, yeah. at the end of the day, Nas is worth hundreds of millions of dollars. Absolutely. He's got all these businesses and everything else like that. I mean, do you really think that Nas needs to write every every yep. word that comes yep. out of his mouth at I this do. point? I think, I think mm -hmm. he needs to write everything out of his mouth, 100%, and I mm -hmm. think he does. I think he does. I think Quentin probably helped him. That's why, yo, I swear to God, man, I understand now why certain, like, you got producers that don't even want another producer in the room with them. Because say they give you an idea of something, they're going to say, I co-made co this beat. Like, you know what I mean? So if right. you in there and we getting creative and you say, yo, yo, what if, what if you said this and that? That don't mean you wrote this fucking song, man. You, we was in there vibing and shit. I want niggas around me that's going to, 
boost that energy that, you know what I mean? But I don't think nobody wrote all of Nas lines in that song and all that. Maybe a hook. Nas been doing this shit a long time. One of the greatest rappers ever. My top five for sure. For sure. He's Everybody doing, top listen, five. Listen, like I was talking about this, this thing called the life journey. This motherfucker probably got other shit to do. Or he want to vibe with somebody with a dope pen. You know, like, like, this, like, look, me personally, I write my own shit. I don't even write my shit. I just go in there and I do my shit. I don't even need no paper. Like, I'm, I'm at that level right now. Yogi shit, nigga. I'm drinking goat milk, nigga. Straight up, nigga. Goat milk. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> like, for real. Like, but working with somebody with a pen, ain't nothing wrong with that. He's still Nas. He still gave you, I made you look. Represent, represent. Live at the barbecue. You know what I'm saying? That's still classic shit. So if you want to work with somebody, I'm sure a lot of niggas work with different niggas. Certain niggas just don't do that. Certain niggas just feel like they don't need to do that. And that's cool too. Yeah, but certain niggas don't even respect niggas who who hey. allow people to write rhymes for them. She, she said okay, something that well, was guess crazy. What? She well, was guess like, what? yo. Well, guess what? Go ahead. The niggas who don't respect it, you just lose respect. Life goes on. <laughs> like, that's, like, real. that's not going to stop the world from spinning because somebody lost respect for you. It is what it is. Like, niggas just going to do what they got to do. Do I respect it? I do. Like, like, yo, Will Smith, Summertime. Is that one of your hot? Is that one of the hottest records ever? Yes. Like, I love that yes. record. Yes. He didn't write that shit. Summertime, one of the hottest joints, Will Smith, straight up. Classic. He didn't write it. Play, he didn't write it. I think Nas wrote the shit. But it's a dope record, right? Do you respect that record? Because Nas wrote it? I love that record. Exactly. I love that record. It's music is music. If somebody give me a script and say, yo, you got to say this in a movie. I got to say that in a movie. It's a script. It's entertainment. It's a movie. If somebody writes something on, on, a, on a, and say you say that in a rhyme, you, it, it's music. That's all it is. It's entertainment. However, however you got to get it done, get it done. The first time I heard about Drake was when Lil Wayne did this. It was like a, a American Music Awards or something like that. And the buzz was somebody wrote the rhyme that he was saying on the show. And I was like... Somebody wrote that rhyme for Lil Wayne? The nigga who puts out mad mixtapes? I mean, this nigga's putting out a million mix... How could somebody write a rhyme for Lil Wayne? It turned out to be Drake. You feel what I'm mm. saying? Like, Lil Wayne saw something in that nigga and said, yo, hold up. This nigga pen is crazy. I'm one of the illest rappers ever, and I'm willing to let this nigga ghost write for me. You going to take that away from Lil Wayne? Like, he ain't nice. That's like, real. how do you lose respect for artists like that? That nigga, he's still, the block is hot. He still gave you that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Drop, drop, drop it like it's hot. He still gave you that. So you can't lose respect because he let Drake write around for him. That's just me. No, I'm with you. Again, you know, and I bring Funk Flex up because I remember years ago, I had an argument with him, just a, 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 just going back and forth. And I was saying, yo, I don't care. You got a ghostwriter, so what? It don't matter to me. Right. And he was like, nah, you, can, you cannot be considered one of the greats if you have a ghostwriter. And to me, it, was, it, it all came down to the body of work, to the music, to the songs. I, I, I was like, I'm with but you. See, but I'm see, like, but I don't see, care. But, but that's what they call ghostwriters. A lot of records, he probably wouldn't even know somebody had a ghostwriter or a nigga came up with the hook or a nigga came through with a couple of bars or like. Fat Joe, been in the game since, this is probably his 30, 30 year anniversary too, right? Yeah. One yeah. of the illest rappers who survived decades in the game is still coming with hits. There was a time... Everybody knew he had niggas writing for him. The whole terror squad, that he, that's his thing. That's what, big pun and all that. Come on, son. 
He still gave you fucking the classics, the lean backs and all of that. You still got it. That don't make you lose respect for nobody. Nah, I'm with you. Okay. I'm with you 100%. <laughs> um, let's stick with Quentin Miller for a second. Quentin, he, he said something that was crazy. He said he did a deal, a publishing deal, with um Tricky Stewart. You know Tricky and um The Dream. Yeah. He did a deal with him for 30K. He wrote like six songs for Drake and never got a penny in publishing. Mm. Never got, like, like that 30,000 was all he got. For the Drake situation, when I was working at the bakery and shit, I was I had a publishing deal. You know, they own a very popular studio in Atlanta. They wasn't letting me record in the studio, nothing. I'm like working warehouse jobs and all this shit with a publishing deal, like signed to a publishing deal. So when the Drake shit happened, I still had a publishing deal. And it kind of, I guess, kind of worked out for them because they knew, oh, well, you're in a fuck situation. You're going to need some money. You know, they offer me money that, allowed me to, I don't have to go to work. Like, I'm just like, yeah, you know, this is the next step. You know what I'm saying? And so by the time it all blew up, I hadn't even worked out whatever situation could have been worked out to where, you know, my life would have been changed. And so by the time it all blew up and Drake wasn't fucking with me no more and drama wasn't fucking with me no more, um, I still was in that publishing deal, you know? So, yeah. Yo, that's crazy. I mean, because, I mean, you would think that, okay, if they gave you, let's just say, 100 grand. It was 30. Okay, so they gave you 30 grand and they got six Drake songs out of it? And, and everything else that I did after the Drake shit, like, like a few other songs that I did, like some Wiz Khalifa shit, some uh, g Easy songs, shit like that. Wow. Yo, this publishing game, it's the wild, wild west, my nigga. Niggas, yo, it's a lot. Niggas is missing a lot of money in this publishing <laughs> shit. A lot. It's a lot. Niggas don't even know they missing money. This money flying everywhere. Niggas don't even know. The publishing game is dirty, man. Niggas is, niggas is, it's, it's, it's the, like I said, the wild, wild west out here, man. You know what I'm saying? So... Niggas, if you're an artist, man, get on top of your publishing game. Your publishing is your, that's like, your publishing is like real estate. You can leverage your publishing to get money, to leverage deals. You, it's like real estate. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's actually, I just did a move with uh, a company called Songvest. And where we sold shares of part of the catalog and made, you know what I'm saying? It's like leverage. You just got to know how to move out here with this publishing game. And I've been doing it for about two or three years. It's real. And a lot of niggas is getting robbed. So niggas need to really get on top of that shit, man. This whole Spotify shit too, robbing niggas. This, this game is dirty, man. This whole music shit is, is dirty. It's fucked up. Nah, it is. It is. And it prey on people because people don't know no better. Right. It's a lot of dudes who come in this game and they're young. You know, and this is not just rappers. You know, artists come in. And they just got a big dream. They want well, to guess sing. what? They want to rap. When, when that nigga took that 30, he probably needed it. So sometimes yeah. niggas be like, yo, you know what? Y'all can have this shit. Just give me the 30. Like, I need this right now. So he made that decision. You can't cry about it later. Now, if they tricked you, you said the nigga name was tricky. So, <laughs> 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 you know, they don't call a nigga tricky for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> but hopefully you know hopefully he get on top of his you know cause if you're a ghostwriter his publishing should be good especially writing for Nas I'm sure that check is pretty good him and Hip Boy got classics going on so you know nah I think I think he need to get to that company you just um, mentioned cause I, I don't know that he's, he's getting them publishing checks Song Vest check him out yo speaking of that like you know, I think it was academics. I could be wrong, but I think it was an academics who said a lot of rappers today are signing them same bad deals that the rappers back in the day signed. Do you look at the deal that you signed? Because I know y'all was signed. My Def deal Jam was when you terrible thirty years ago. I look at that, yo. I, yo, I'm look. I'm still looking for the lawyer 
who let me sign that shit. I'm gonna fuck that nigga <laughs> up when I see him. Yo, I'm like, how could you let me sign this shit? But 30 years in a game, you get to renegotiate. And um, we talking Universal right now and hopefully things will get back to where they should be. You know, when you survive 30 years in a game, 30 years in life, still here, still breathing, bless, blessings, you get to do that. You get to talk your shit and, you know, renegotiate. It takes 30 years, though. That's crazy. So your deal was that bad. Yeah, for sure. And you know what? My deal was bad, and I had a deal with, with Jay. My deal mm -hmm. was with Jam Master Jay, and Jay's not here no more. So I, it's like I, I have nobody to really, you know what I'm saying, talk to about the deal we did. Okay, so let me ask His, you this. Jam Master Jay deal was, was, was terrible. You know how much money Onyx and Jay made Def Jam? And Jay had to keep doing what he had to do in the streets? He had a bad deal. Because if his deal was official, Jay would still be here. Yeah, most likely. Because yeah. he probably wouldn't have to been, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah, even his deal was fucked up. Okay, so so you just bought something up. So if his deal is fucked up and I'm signing him. You know yours is going to be terrible. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so do you blame anybody in that mix? Do you look and be like, yo, I had a lawyer. It's the lawyer's fault. It's Jay's fault. It's Def Jam's fault. Or do you just look at it, yo, it is what it is. And I wouldn't be sitting here today had I not taken that deal. I look at it like the lawyer should have been more aggressive because you're the lawyer. We, we young kids, we don't know what you know. You know what you know. You're supposed to apply that. That's why you're the lawyer and you're taking our money. So I don't regret anything. I don't blame anything. But the lawyers should be way more di diligent with what they're doing because kids is signing their fucking life away. Niggas ain't even getting deals no more. Niggas is just... Niggas just figured this shit out like, fuck it, let me go viral, let me try to do something online. Niggas don't even need deals no more. Keep your fucking masses, fuck these labels, do your own shit, put your money, keep investing in yourself. Fuck the labels, because they take it everything. Nah, put this the shit up to yourself, smart. man. United Masses, Symphonic, Distribution, whatever the fuck you gonna do, do it. Don't wait for these fucking labels. Let them niggas come at you, and then once you have... The bargaining power, because you made it, then you could talk your shit. But fuck these labels, man. Yeah, and that and now, see, you you just touched on something that's so real. A lot of these kids, they smart. They know, like like I might not know all that the lawyer know, but I know I'm making a lot of money with these streaming. Right. So when they do sign these deals, a lot of them is getting advances that back in the days was unheard of, was like Michael Jackson type advances. Right. People, people signed in the day and getting two million straight to the pocket. Right. Three, four, five million straight to the pocket. That's not recording. That's not, that's not marketing. That's my advance. So the game definitely switched up, but you got to play it the right way. An advancement is only a loan though. You got paid that back. Nobody giving you. You don't just get two million and you you run up in the sunset. You, no, nigga, you owe me two million, nigga. You might as well just do it yourself because the the, you, the loan is good. If you if most of the time, if it's two mil, of course niggas gonna take it. That's you'll be stupid not to. But it's just a loan. It's just a loan. That's it. It's advance. You're right. An advancement. Now, now make and, now and, make and, it and, back, nigga. Uh, Make it back. Let's underline this word. Every 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 artist on planet Earth need to know this word. Recoupable. Of course. Because make, everything... make it back. You owe us now. Now, yep. now you don't get nothing until you pass the threshold of the two million we gave you. And a lot of times niggas don't pass that threshold. So niggas be just in the fucking the negative the whole time with the label. Don't get no checks. 
So, you know, it's, it's an advancement. Yeah. Now, nah, you right. Yo, I should have asked you this earlier, and I don't know why it just popped into my head just now. We mentioned Nas being one of the greatest ever. You got to put him in the top three, top five of all time. Did you hear, did you, what 21 Savage was like, yo, Nas ain't relevant right now? Mm. Yeah, I heard that. From his perspective. Do we give, from, do we no, give him from a his pass? Perspective, he's, from his age group, from where uh -huh. he's from, he's not relevant. He's not lying. To us, that's like saying Jesus Christ don't exist. You know what I'm saying? It's like blasphemy. Like, are you crazy? But he's not us. He's probably, is he even 30 yet? Like he nah, missed, he's in his 20s. he missed the classics. He missed, he missed what we witnessed. You know what I'm saying? He missed it. Them niggas is listening to a different type of music, a different hi-hat, a different sound, a different bop and swing. They not hearing what we hearing. It's too, it's hip hop, but it's separate genres of what we do. And Nas' genre is not relevant to his genre. It's just not the same sandwich. That, that, that's that's truth. He's not. He's that's speaking truth. from his it's perspective. Real. Yo, when you look out Man. the window, you're looking out the window through your eyes. You can't speak for nobody else. So if Twenty One Savage thinks that Nas is not relevant, that's what he thinks. You you can. He could probably hear a million Nas albums and still say the same shit. Well, he's not relevant. Yeah, that's dope, but hey, I'm listening to this shit over here. It's different. And that's cool. Everybody, everybody can do that. Have your opinion. We know mm -hmm. Nas is top five dead or alive. We know that. Yeah. You know? Mm. It's just okay. diff it's just different. There's different levels to this shit, man. And Nas, you know, again, shout out to Nas. He got And he then got they his, did uh, a song together, right? Yeah, then they did a song exactly. together. Exactly. So yeah. what, what that did was bridge the gap. Like, yep. okay. See, Nas came at it like a an adult. Not mad. Like, okay, if that's what you feel. Let's let's record together. And then we can vibe and we can come to terms. And then you can see why I'm the nicest. And I'm sure if they was in the studio together, I, I'm sure 21 Savage saw <laughs> why. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. He bridged the gap. You don't got to come at it all. Fuck that. Just that. You let 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 the other people do that. Let the people, the com the commentators do that. Nas came at it the right way. Let me embrace this young brother. Yo, yo, my nigga, it's popping. Woo -woo. Because yeah, me personally. I don't listen to 21 Savage, but he must be good because I think Complex named him the most influential rapper or some shit. You know, you know what's the crazy shit? When I hear 21 Savage, you know what tone I hear? I hear Ice T's tone. Mm -hmm. Listen yep. to Ice T back in the days and play 21 Savage. It's the same tone, the same effort in their music. When I hear 21, he's like the new Ice T to me. When I hear it, sonically, like, Oh, he's he got that that low, you know, that low tone. So, you know. Shout to 21 Savage. I, I mean, see. um everybody entitled to their own opinion. And like you said, um, I think Nas handled it the right and I, for that matter, 21 handled it the right way. He spoke his truth and they came together and they put out a dope joint. So right. yeah. All right. And I don't think um, he was being, he wasn't being like spiteful saying some shit like that. He was just talking like he's not relevant. You know? No, he's speaking his truth. He's exactly. a kid. Exactly. He's speaking his truth. All right. Um, Alec Baldwin, veteran actor. Man. This guy's been charged with involuntary manslaughter, both as a producer and an actor, for fatally shooting that young woman on the set of Rust. 
He, he's going to beat the criminal case and he's going to get sued for a civil case. That's all. They're not putting Alec Baldwin in jail for shooting somebody by accident. But you kill somebody, bro. You, 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 you have to, you know, it was an accident though. I don't think he purposely shot somebody and said, I'm going to shoot you. You know what I'm saying? So if it's an accident, you're at fault. Yes. But at the end of the day, I don't think they're going to put him behind bars. Okay, so I got to ask That's you. That's what you I think. You know, plus, he's Alec Baldwin. He's, you know, he got money. You know, it's it, it wasn't just him. It was on a set. It's, it's, it's a lot of things that can make it not his fault. Mm -hmm. I didn't load the gun. It was just, I didn't know. You know what I mean? It's, I doubt if, I doubt if he goes to jail, but he should be held responsible. Okay. So, so I got to ask you, cause you mentioned earlier, your movie strapped. The title of the movie implies Yo, guns. And that's what I said. We sh shot the Forest Whitaker, Bo King Woodbomb. Um, it's the 30th anniversary of Strap 2. Um, we shot so many bullets in that movie. I mean, thousands. Just, it was a gun movie. I was a gun dealer. Nobody got hurt. So, okay, so let me ask you. Because cause you said you don't think Alec is going to be convicted criminally. Yeah. What is the protocol? You you dealt with a movie where y'all shot thousands of bullets. What's the protocol? Does does the onus fall on the actor? The protocol is fall? this. When you shoot in a movie, you have the weapons guy. He's the guy, if you shoot in a movie with weapons, there's, he's the guy with the guns. He mm -hmm. Every time he gives you the gun, he says the gun is hot. It might have blanks in it, right? Blanks. Mm -hmm. There's nothing coming out of blank. It's just sound. Bop, pop, pop, pop. But he will tell you the gun is hot. He hands you the gun. You know the gun is hot. As soon as you do the scene, boom, 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 boom. The first thing you do is check it and you give it back to the, the, the dude and he goes off and he does what he does with it and get, brings it back. You never have the gun just hanging around, chilling. It's always, you should do the scene. We give it back to you. You ready to do shit? We give it back to you. It's always the handoff. That's why I'm confused. Like, how did the gun get loaded with a real fucking bullet? Okay, but you just said you as an actor, you check it. Do you check it before you pull that trigger or do you check it after the scene? You check it, I check it and after. then you give it back. I check it after. So you so you just totally trust that armorer, that guy who's the When gun he gives guy. it to me, he says it's hot. Yeah, it's, what, uh -huh. yeah, it's hot. I, if I cock it, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's, it's good. I trust him. So you don't, so so as an actor, you not even thinking twice, like, yo, if this man handed me, the, or this man, this woman, the, the the armorer, if they hand me the gun, they say it's hot, I'm good to go. I can go and squeeze this trigger and do whatever. And 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 I can squeeze the trigger during the scene. Correct. Not just hanging around, yo, psh, psh, like not at crab service eating the, you know what I mean? No. Yes, I can shoot it when it's time to shoot. When it's time, you get the gun, probably the last thing. Okay, rolling. All right, let's go. Then you get the gun, action. You know what I'm saying? I'm asking you this because, you know, most people have never been on a movie set, let alone acted in one like you've acted in several. Mm -hmm. So most people don't know the protocol you know, is is the actor himself or herself responsible for checking the chamber I've to see? I've never been on a movie set where there was live rounds. Like, why is there a live round? You, they didn't get killed from a fucking cap, like a, a, a cap, a cap gun. It was a live rounds in there. Why? Yep. Why? Why would you put live rounds in a fucking gun on a movie set? Whoever put the live rounds in there, I don't know. I don't know the story, but why? That's all I'm saying. Is if it's a movie, why are you using live rounds? It's just a movie, pop, 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 just for the effect, just for the sound. Nowadays, you don't even need to even have anything. Niggas go and they could have the shit on the screen. Like, mm -hmm. I, why is there a live round in the gun? That's what. I, Yo, we did a movie with Stick, Day in the Life. 
Everybody's in that movie. Makai Pfeiffer, Bo King, everybody in that movie, right? It's an all rapping movie. It's stick directed and produced it. This nigga was directing with, with the Henny bottle, my nigga. We shot over a million rounds and no, and we all hood nigga black. Nobody got shot. Nobody got hurt. Nothing. And we was careless. Niggas drinking Henny, smoking. Shooting our own movie. Niggas was careless. Not careless, but you know. It was a nigga set. You know what I mean? And nobody yeah, got hurt. Yeah. So how the fuck Big Tom acted like Alec Baldwin? I'm sure he had a fucking great set, great people around and all this shit, and somebody get killed. That's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. That's fucking crazy. I guess I'm just asking these line of questions because me being on the outside, just like most people who are going to listen to this, I don't even know how they could charge him as an actor. It's like, yo, that's not my job. When, when somebody hand me this gun, I'm thinking that it's Blinks in here for all the reasons you just said. Right. I, it took him a long time to get charged, though. It, yeah. that, that shit happened like almost like what, a year or two. I don't know. It was a long time ago. So they had to decide, well, you know, well, we got to do something. You know what I'm saying? That's why I said I don't think he's going to get charged criminally. He is charged criminally. Now, no, he might no, not be found no. guilty. Uh, yeah, he's charged criminally. I don't think he's going to get convicted criminally. Correct. But Correct. I do think that he, if, if it was his production, if it was his movie, and if he pulled the trigger, then even if it wasn't, he pulled the trigger, he's at fault. Civic, civilly, he should cough up, just cough up the bread, man. Well, civilly, I think they already took care of it. Oh, they did? Because he worked out, yeah, they worked out a deal with, with the husband mm. of the young lady who was killed already. Mm. So, and, and on top of it, they made her husband an executive producer of Rust. Mm. So, civilly, I think he's in the clear. Now, it just come down to the criminal charges, which... Him, like most people, didn't think he would be charged. Well, I, I, well, they, I, well, I want to, I want to see, I want to see what happened because you know, like you said, I've been on movie sets and it's 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 just mind blowing that something like that can happen. That shit happened with Bruce Lee. They, you know, his, his son, son, yep, got killed. You know, I don't think uh, nothing ever since that happened. And they said that was a conspiracy and all of that shit. So. Why is there live rounds on the on the movie set? Yeah. And to this day, nobody can figure out where that live round came from. Well, that's why they go to court and they want to figure this shit out. That's why he's, they want to figure this shit out. Like, why? We ain't going to just leave it yeah. like we want to get to the bottom of it. But like I said, man, Alec Baldwin, you got to deal with that. It's something that's going to be on his hands and... You know, that's something he got to deal with. All right. Um, Cher. Legendary Cher. Oh. Cher's something like 76 years old. No, she's 71. 76. She's 76? 76, my brother. 76 years old. Her new man. Not 71 and 76 is a big difference. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> she a senior citizen. Let's just put it that way, right? Yeah. But you know what's crazy? You my age, and when we was coming up, Cher was bad, right? Cher was bad. She, she was had been bad. Bad. Yep. Baddie. That, they say baddie. She was a baddie yeah, back yeah. in the days. But that was... 40 years, 30 years ago, bro. Like, <laughs> but yo, listen. Son, do what he got to do, man. Love, love has no limit, man. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you just got to respect, respect the God, how he moving. You know? I mean, that's crazy, though. Just to, yo, is, to, to is, think but, about, but is that to love? think of, no, for, to think about anything other than that is like, you don't want to think about it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, we're just going to look at this shit right here and not think about anything else. We're not, I don't, like, we don't want to think about that. You know what I mean? Nah, I'm going <laughs> to tell you, they engage that. We don't want to see only fans. We don't, we, we don't want to see that. <laughs> we don't want to see that. 
<laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> we don't want we don't want to see that. Walking out no, the restaurant, you, that's that's about that's all we that's all we need. That's it. That's it. We don't need no other visuals. No other visuals. But well, you understand. I respect I respect the God, you know. Like I said, you never know who you're gonna fall in love with. He didn't, when he when he woke up that morning, he didn't know he was gonna meet her. He met her and something happened. It was a spark in the air. Who the fuck knows? Magic happened. You know what I'm saying? Let's just hope, let's just hope he makes the will. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, because if you do all of that and don't make the will, then it's like. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> They were like, yo, you got to go, my nigga. Yo. The crib is sold. Is you got to go. I mean, home, I mean, he's 36 years old. Right. It's a 40-year difference. Right. He he just he just came he just came off Amber Rose. I I mean, like you said, you never know who you're going to fall in love with, never but know. you you 36 Damn. That's share, nigga. That's share. She's she, she's seventy six, and I'm gonna keep it real. She still looks good for seventy six. I don't, I don't know how she looks. She with no looks like on she though. sleeps in a fucking ice bed, nigga. Like her room must be like on forty. She must sleep in the fucking <laughs> freezer. <laughs> Cause she preserved her shit very well. Seventy six. She doesn't look like. No, she looks great. She and looks she's great. looked great her whole life. She has. She looks great I'll for 76. It. She don't look a day over 65. I don't know how she look when that makeup come off. But um they engaged. You can't you can't you can't you can't. I respect I respect I, love, man. I gotta respect love, man. If it's love. Yo, have you ever fallen in love with an older woman? And for that matter, me, have you ever um, been with an older me, woman? No, no, no. No? No. So so if she I don't do I don't do there, I don't do the cougars, man. We don't like <laughs> <laughs> I'm not you saw Eddie Murphy in a movie <laughs> when he slept with um Earth the Kid. Yeah, with Earth the Kid. It's like we don't no. Nah, I'm good. But I respect I respect them though. You know, like I said, love is something the world needs. We need more love in the world, man. And if she's 76 and he's 36, it's a 40-year gap, then so be it. You know, because he's a grown man. She's a, she's a grown woman. They can, they have, they can talk, they can have conversations, they can build together, they can have a, you know what I mean? It's not like he's a child, he's a grown fucking man. He's a grown man and she's a grown woman. She's just an older woman, but she's grown. All jokes aside, he's not the first. He ain't the first. You know, but you know, we play it from the Himalayas, man. We all know where this shit is coming from and where it's going, man. You on the dig, man? You know what I'm saying? Hope the little man make the will, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> He's gonna be I. He gonna be very. What? How much is share worth? Exactly. Exactly. Uh, yo, to, everybody to laughing at point? that nigga while he driving that drop thing like, ha ha. I hope he make the will. That's it. He <laughs> should. That simple. That's it. More power to the young brother, man. All right. Yo, you mentioned Jam Master J. Somebody who's near and dear to your heart. We talked about him a couple of times in this conversation. Yeah. Finally, after all these years, the people who allegedly are responsible for his death are going to trial. Finally. Hmm. But the ironic thing is Southwest T, mm. you know T, BMF. The feds are trying to bring him on the stand because they're saying that the drugs that, that, that Jay got actually was supplied by T and BMF. Did you hear that? I ain't really hear about that. I think I might have heard that shit. That whole situation is crazy, man. Um, I will say this. Jay is a legend. Never could be replaced for what he's done for the culture. And 
the streets is saying a whole lot of other shit. The streets is saying it's a lot of other shit. Like, like you said, allegedly. But at the end of the day, like I said, Jay is gone. His music memories last forever, but he's gone. So no matter what really happens to me, it doesn't matter. Cause you know, like you said, that's that was my brother, man. Like, you know, that was my that was my 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 big brother. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, if it wasn't for him, it, it wouldn't be no y'all. I mean, yeah, yeah, man. It's like you know, so all that shit is just whatever to me. I just, I just listen. I, I hear the things. I hear what's going on, but I don't give a fuck. I don't care. You know. Yeah. Okay. Um. Tell me, did I get this right? Are you retiring from hip hop this year? Nah, not this year. Like I said, we got a, we got a like a thirty eight city tour, starting off in March. But next year, yeah, I want to retire. I want to do different things. Um, I've been writing a lot of movies. I just want to get behind the camera, do a lot of directing, a lot of producing. Um, you know, I did hip hop already. It's like it's not more I could really do. But you know what's the crazy thing? Um, I just read something about Ozzy Osbourne. He's like seventy something years old, and he was like, "Yo, I can't go on tour no more." And I was like, "Damn, this nigga is still thinking about touring at seventy one? Yeah. Damn. So, am I gonna be able to retire? Maybe not. But at the end of the day, I just want to take some time off and just do some different things. You know what I'm saying?" And just do some different things. That's all. Hip hop okay, is so hip hop is always gonna be the foundation though. So for retirement for you looks like no more touring. No more touring, no more studio, just 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 do doing some other shit. You know what I mean? Just doing some other shit. Okay, I know you said, you know, you have no regrets in hip hop or just in life in general. And I don't know why this just popped into my head. This is this is a, a, a random thought. But back in um, 2014, hmm. you got into it with Charlemagne the God. Mm -hmm. Clip went viral, all of that. Mm -hmm. Number one, is that one of them episodes that you regret in your career? Because clearly you, 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 you're like a grown I said, well, man. No, 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 no. I don't regret what happened with Charlemagne. It was real. I said what I said, he said what he said, and there was an incident. Nobody put hands on nobody. I didn't walk out in handcuffs. Might have went viral. But, but at the end of the day, me and Charlemagne shook hands before I left the building. That mm. was the realest shit. I ain't stomp out of there mad and all of that. I sat down, had the interview after the incident. And left, took pictures, and that was that. It was an incident. I don't regret anything because he needed to hear that because I needed to say it. Mm. And that's Have all it was. That's all then? it was. And Charlemagne is cool with me. I see Charlemagne's love is love. You know what I'm saying? Envy, Angelique, all good. Everything is good. It's no problem Beautiful. because at the end of the day, when I left, I didn't want it to be no problem because what happened happened right there. And that was some real shit on his behalf and my behalf. You know what I'm saying? I got to shake. I got to give my hat to him because he kept it solid after the incident. You know what I'm saying? He didn't, he didn't back down. Nobody backed down. We was going head to head. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, it just happened. And it wasn't planned. And when things ain't planned, they happen. As long as nobody got hurt, nobody went to jail, nobody caught a body. We lived to we lived to to tell it another day. That's dope. That's dope. Shout to Charlemagne, man, and, and, and Envy and Angie for that matter. You know the funny thing is, like, I could be walking through the airport, you know, slam and all that. Niggas be like, yo, you the nigga that screamed on Charlemagne, like, <laughs> like, because <laughs> this shit went viral. That was like a part of my career that shit was like putting out a record almost like you know what i'm saying like like you put out a video like you know what i'm saying like it 
it was just part of my life, part of my career. And I, I don't run from nothing. It happened, and it happened. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um. You know, it's crazy that that you saying. You know, you're thinking about retiring. Because clearly, you 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 still young, you still vibrant. But you know, to your point, you've been doing this for thirty years. Most people in any other profession, after thirty years, they ready to turn it in, get the gold watch, go off, travel, do whatever. That's it. KRS One, he responded to Bow Wow. Bow Wow put a um, he put a tweet out there. He said. A lot of rappers, he said, he said rappers need to come together and form a union. Mm. And even as you're talking about retiring, that statement couldn't be no more true. Because there's so many rappers, you know, they die penniless. And people look at these celebrities and because they dance to their music and because they see them in videos, they think they good. And a lot of times they're not. And we seeing, you know, so many rappers is leaving here right now and they not leaving here with much to their name, you know. So what's your thoughts on that? I think Bow Wow is correct. There should be a union for rappers, for musicians in, in general. You know, I've done movies and we have SAG, which is Screen Actors Guild. There's a, a guild and a union. You have a pension insurance if you're doing the right things you can have insurance. you know what i'm saying like it's 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 a union it protects you you know what i'm saying rappers don't have that models don't have that rappers don't have that so you know there should be a union for rappers because like you said a lot, these rappers don't got no life insurance a lot of matter of fact the labels got life insurance on the rappers yo that's crazy you know what i'm saying it's like of course if if i sign you and you're liable to owe me $2 million. If you did, you're fucking damn right, I'm going to put a life insurance on you. If you die, I got to get my money back, right? Uh. Right. So there should be a union because we make so much money for these labels, for these for the entertainment business. And like you said, they get rappers get a fraction of what they should get. Like it said, so Wild Wild West niggas getting robbed publishing, you getting robbed and screaming, you getting robbed physically, you getting robbed. And like you said, they leaving with nothing, man. So there should be a union, Karis one, I think Chuck D, um, and those guys are actually putting together a union. And I think Chuck D and Karis one are the perfect guys to um lead that fight. Curtis Blow, yep. one of the originators yep. of this shit. He's part of it. And, you know, 50 years of hip hop, this should be a union. Let's let's get it together. And I think SAG Screen Actors Guild is even merging with the music business. I've so I've heard. Mm -hmm. If that happens, then that's cool. You know yeah. what I mean? You just gotta sell a certain amount of records and um pay your union dues to be in the union. Cause when you yeah. In the union, you got to pay union dues. It's not like, yo, I'm just in the union. The union gets paid because they take a percentage of what you're making. It's called union dues. You have to pay. So, yeah, there should be a union. For sure. It's long overdue. Mm -hmm. It's long overdue. Okay, um, by any chance did you catch that Keith Murray interview? I, Keith I forgot who he Murray did it with. Keith Murray is my guy. Now, listen. <laughs> Yo, that was a great way to start the year off, man. Like, and that and that was and that was good for a week, cause they can't. He, it, more names kept coming out. This, that, yo, that nigga. I thought I could tell a story. That nigga is funny. Keep. I could watch his interviews all day. Um, Keith is my man. I love Keith, man. You know, we had the battle. I battled Keith Murray. That's my. That's my brother. You know, we broke bread. You know, we I've been I've been knowing Keith for years, and those stories are funny. So, I ain't got nothing bad to say about Keith. I was heavily entertained. 
Yeah, I think everybody was heavily entertained. Keith ain't hold nothing back, <laughs> and he, he could tell a story. I'm like, yo, wh- first off, when you first saw him, you like, yo, where Keith been? <laughs> and then he came back. He, <laughs> everything yo, Keith, he been yo, wanting to say. Yo, he was so animated and like, it's crazy, son. Like, oh, oh, but all you can do is listen and be like, it was funny, like you know, you you know, you can't take it too serious. He's he's a lighthearted guy. He, he he's he's never he don't want to hurt nobody. You know what I'm saying? He just he's just a fu- he's funny. Keep was funny and um, he's 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 got his own way, his own way yeah, of being. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? His own way of moving, and that's what I respect about Keith. Always, yeah, always been fact. like that. Never changed, man. Now that I think about it, wasn't you? He was he was on that Survival of the Illest tour with you. He was on the tour with us. Eric Y'all, Sherman, DMX. Eric, DMX was on the Survival of the Illest tour. Onyx, DMX, Redman, Method Man, the whole Wu Tang clan. Foxy. <laughs> Foxy, Cormega, um, Sweet T. Crazy tour. Who else was on the tour? Sons of Man was on the tour. They was opening and um, it was a crazy tour, man. Yo, what was some of the craziest moments on that tour? The Survival Illust tour. Rest in peace to DMX, man. Like his show, incredible. Like the energy, like that year he came, it was just like it was crazy. I mean, every night slam mosh pits, slam dancing. One one time, you know, DMX like to drive the vans a lot. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, yeah. Once we get to the spots, he be telling the driver, get out, get out, let me drive. Driving the, everybody in the me, everybody, like we're all in the van with this nigga driving around, like crazy shit, man. Just just dumb shit. A lot of, a lot of drugs, a lot of weed, you know, a lot of drinking and wilding out, hotel, after parties. Yo, listen, I'm glad there was no Instagram back then. I'm not gonna, you know, <laughs> I'm not gonna say nothing. You know what I mean? You had to be there. If you know, you know. Yo, now that I think about it, your man, Keith Murray, in his interview, he was like, yo, I mean, again, he ain't hold back on nothing. He was like, he slept with Foxy. That was new. Mm. Was was that something that you, did, did you peep that when y'all was on tour? I don't know if that happened when we was on tour. I don't, nah, no, I didn't peep. Did you peep the chemistry? That's nah, what I'm asking. Nah, nah, definitely not. She she was with her brother, Pretty Boy. She was, she was just coming in the game, man. She was a baby. You know what I'm saying? We in the back of the bus. Ah! You look at the back of the bus, we wilding. She in the front, chilling, quiet. You know what I mean? Like, nah. She was like baby, baby girl and shit. We're like, I didn't, I didn't see that. Yeah, I, I don't know, man. Um, but that hey, was we, a we crazy know. tour. Just as a fan, I love that tour. That tour was crazy. That tour, that tour was, that tour was crazy. And, and DMX was, he was on fire. He was on fire at the time. We was on our third album, so we did the we did the joint "Shut Him Down" with DMX, and we never performed it. We never performed the joint with DMX, the "Shut Him Down" record, because no, when he went on, at first it was like, "I, I Onyx, y'all go on, DMX, we going we going trade every night. You go on last, you go on last." After the point, I was like, "Yo, let that nigga go on last, because that nigga energy is like, we don't want to go on after DMX." <laughs> Not because we can't go on at the DMX, because I'm gonna keep it real. We got Onyx got the best show in hip hop. I don't give a fuck anybody. I, we nobody better than us performing. Nobody. Put us on an hour on stage with anybody. We'll wreck anybody, any group, any group in hip hop on stage. They can't fuck with us. But going on at the DMX. He's going to take all the energy. So by the time we get on stage, the energy is gone. So I was like, yo, let's be, let's be smart about this shit. We go on first. We take the energy. Then we let him have, let him have the leftovers. So that's what we did. <laughs> <laughs> so by the, time we, by the time Slam came on, the crowd still had energy because he's DMX. He's the hot ticket. But we took a lot of that energy away. 
And you notice the difference before he before, like when he got on stage before us, you notice the difference to when he got on stage after us. You notice the crowd, the reaction. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's just being smart. And knowing he's the hot ticket. He that nigga right now. This is first album, this is our third album. You get it? So of course yeah, it's he's gonna, nothing he like gonna, that that yeah. new that that's it's nothing new like love. that new when you it's got your first like album, it. your first album is always the hottest one. In most cases. Yeah. Okay, um I don't even know if I got the name right. I was talking to Vlad offline. And he said that um he was at an event that you was at, you and Sticky. Something what is it called the the giving them their flowers event? Oh the roses, yeah. Vlad came through, no doubt. It was Vlad called came. um giving this 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 very, very um very nice girl from LA named Penny Lane. She came up with the idea with um Edie I mean from Outlaws. Mm -hmm. And Edie I Amin mean had the first roses. They gave him his roses. He was on a cruise ship. Um, was, you know, everybody was, because he's been in the game for a minute too. You know, Edie I Amin mean running with Pac and, you know, gave him his flowers, gave him his roses. So ours was the second one. You know, um, we did it at a spot called Project Projects um, Space LA. Um, nice event. And we basically, everybody who came gave us our flowers while we still here. Cause a lot of time you get your flowers when you're gone. So she put the event together, it was dope. You know what I'm saying? A lot of street vendors came out. Um, and a lot of real close friends came out, and we just had a real good time. Smoked a lot of good weed. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so yeah, Vlad came through. I was surprised Vlad came through. And you know who else came through? Gangsta Boo was there. Yep. He told and me. And that's the first time I met her. And she oh, was word? uh she was just so nice, man. She was just like, yo, I never met you. And I used to see on my Weisha. And we had a great time, man. It was just like, and that's the first time I met her. And then we became good friends, you know, on you know, Instagram. What up, what up, my all that. And then um, yeah, that was right before she passed, man. So that night, special night. Cause that's the the, the first time I met Gangsta Boo. Did you get any pictures with her? Um, yeah, I think so. I think we got like a little video. Um, pictures. I think her husband Emmett got the pictures. Actually, yeah. Yeah, I hope y'all took some with her. Yeah, and man, that was crazy that was thing. that was. She was so nice and just. She was a gangster. She was a gangster boo. And I was like, yeah, I was at the um, I was at the verses. She was like, oh, you saw it. I said, like, yeah, I seen you. <laughs> I saw you talking that talk. You know, we had a, we had a good time, man. It was, you know, let her rest in peace, bro. Or, yeah, I mean, we losing way too many of these rappers, man, way too young. Yeah, man, it's like, people got to know, you can't take nothing no more, man. You, you can't even take anything no more. These drugs is cut with this fentanyl shit, man. I seen so many brothers just just, just gone, man, like gone over some, over some shit. Like when we came up, we was doing hard drugs. It was good. Like, you know, we was doing the exercise and we was doing all of that. We had a good time and it was good. Now it's different, man. You can't even pop nothing, sniff nothing, smoke some weed, drink some water, and chill the fuck out, man, because this shit is just crazy, man. It's crazy out here. So many rappers, so many actors, so many people who have so much more to give in life just dying over some fentanyl shit. You know what I'm saying? It's just... Not worth it. It's not yeah. worth it. It's not fucking worth it. Yeah, I mean, um, you don't even have to take a lot. Like, that fentanyl, you take one tab of, and, and it's a wrap. I don't want to know. It, it don't. Like, I don't want to know. Like, I, I've, I've heard enough and I've seen enough. It's like, yo, you know what? Nah, can't do that. Yeah, well, I'm glad you got a chance to meet Boo while she was still here. Yeah. Very nice woman. Yeah. Uh, very nice woman. Um, yeah. Again, my heart go out to her family, man. Yo, you know what's crazy, too? Vlad told me something crazy. Is this true? He said Idi Amin was like, yo, Tupac shaved his head 
because he saw y'all, what y'all was doing with the shaved heads back in the days. Is that real? Probably that. And probably his hairline was receding. That nigga hairline. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no disrespect to Pac, but that nigga hairline was it. You know what I mean? You saw a juice, nigga. You know what I mean? I would have cut my shit bald too. I'm waiting for LeBron to cut his shit, man. He, he, he got it. Come on, LeBron. C come, come to the, come to the dark side, my nigga. Like a couple of niggas need to just let it. Snoop Dogg too. Let it go, my nigga. Come, St Stephen A. Smith. A lot of niggas need to come to the dark side, man. It's 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 good, man. It's it's nothing wrong with the dark side, man. You know this is that pretty shit, man. Ask Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan cut his hair because of us. Huh? Michael Jordan cut his hair bald because of Onyx. Because of Onyx. Get out of here. Do the knowledge, nigga. Who? Okay. Did somebody tell you this, or are you just assuming somebody? MJ cut his I head? know for a fact. What year did Michael Jordan cut his hair bald? I don't know, but after this interview, I'm, I'm going to do my research. All right. <laughs> <laughs> we responsible for Michael Jordan. Come on, son. The whole Fat Five, Jalen Rose, all them niggas, Weber, all them niggas, they cut their hair bald because of us. That might be true. Jada I Kiss. think Jordan cut his in the 80s, though. I don't know about that. Y'all wasn't even out at that time. <laughs> like, you reach you reach back in time. I don't know about that. Nah. Because that nigga Jordan had a fro for a long time. It, it, until, until the late 80s. You sure? Yeah. All right. <laughs> 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 now you you might you might need some royalties from Jalen and, and uh Weber and all the rest of them. <laughs> Tupac might he might somewhere need to send you a royalty check, but I don't know about Jordan. But now not, not MJ, huh? Okay. Nah, all not right. MJ. All right. <laughs> oh man. Oh speaking of rapping, take it too soon. Take off. Mm. You know, damn that shit. That was one fucked. hurt. That shit was fucked up, bro. Cause he ain't have nothing to do with it. He ain't have no problem with nobody. He was just minding his business for what, I, for what I'm hearing. It's just like he just got caught wrong place, wrong time, man. That shit's fucked up. And what's more fucked up is that the nigga Quavo had the argument. You know what I'm saying? That kind of triggered the whole shit. Yeah. So yeah. I, you know, just the, the whole shit was, but it, from what I from what I've seen, it didn't look like it needed to escalate that far. Niggas was just talking and talking and talking. But you know, this gunplay shit is crazy, man. And believe me, whoever shot him didn't mean to shoot him. It was some reckless bullshit that happened. Like, like these niggas got guns and don't even know how to aim or shoot the shit. Like niggas don't even know how to shoot. Niggas get a gun and just. It just want to catch a body. Never went to the gun range. Never shot a can. Nothing like niggas don't even niggas don't even know how to use this shit and use it. And a baby gets killed or you know, an old lady gets shot. Takeoff got shot. It was by accident. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like an accident. It's just fucked up. You know? They got somebody locked up for it. He bailed out. You know. And and he Yo, seemed you, he seemed like a good dude too, man. He seemed like a nice nice kid, man. Nah, out of all of them, he was the most reserved, quiet one. Like nice kid, man. You know, and it's just it's just sad, man. You know, it's sad, man. I heard. I think I just read today that Qua Quavo's gonna do something for the at the Grammys for him. I want to I want to see that. You know what I mean? I want to see that because. That, that, that shouldn't have happened. I know the last time you sat down on Vlad, you said that um, Cardi B, you felt as though she was the reason that the, the group broke up. Do you think now um, Offset, you know, regrets, yo, in the last months of this man's life, I wasn't really with him like that. He even went on to make a whole album. 
with Quavo? Like, do you think he's sitting on regrets? And do you still, at this point, feel as though Cardi was behind the group breaking up? Well, with the Cole Cardi thing, what I said was she was probably part of him pulling away doing his own thing in life. Once you have a baby with somebody, you settling down with somebody, you move away from the, your, your homies. So, of course, she's part of separating him from Migos because mm -hmm. she's pulling in that direction. You know what I'm saying? You got to hold your, your queen down, right? So if she got to move that direction, you got to move that direction. And so if you, you can't be in two places at one time. But do I think he feels regret? No. I think... Really? No. Why, why would he feel regret? I mean, if he was there, you think the situation would, would have been different? I mean, what is there to regret? Somebody got killed close to you. All you can do is just mourn and move on with your life. And just keep the memories. I mean, that's all you can really do. Read the reality of the situation because if you if you regret thinking that, then that, that could just eat you up. So I don't think there's no regret. You know, nobody said they was beefing or there's a problem. You know, just because you not in the group no more, you you don't rap with niggas no more, it doesn't mean there's a problem. It means that I'm doing something different. I'm going this way. Y'all niggas is making a left. I'm making a right. What it is. We we both, we all elevated to where we have star status, each in their own right. They put out records and they became famous. And they became, let me tell you something about, this is, I don't give a fuck what group you in. You're a soloist before you become in a group. Hmm. You're, you're a soloist before you become in the group. A group is, Onyx was four solo rappers coming together. Migos was three solo rappers coming together. The Beatles, four solo, everybody is solo first. Because everybody hold down their own square. They hold down their own, you're a rapper, you're holding down your verse. If you're in the Beatles, you're doing the drums, you're doing this. Everybody's doing the, they own shit. So how is it a, it's a, a basketball team. You you a soloist before you be before there's a team. LeBron James, LeBron James before it's the Lakers. Just like rap. Everybody's a soloist before they become in a group. So for them niggas to break up is you you build you build up so you could break up. Mm -hmm. Don't break up before the build up though. They got to a point where they became superstars and they can do that. And son of regret. We did the Migos thing. It's time to move on. We can always come back to it. Yeah. We can always come back to it. The brand is still there. You know, it's just a brand. The brand could, we can always come back to that. But at this point, yo, you know, I made solo records, Sticky made solo records. We, we are solo artists. We got different visions on different things at some times. It can't be all the group, group, group shit all the time. Mm -hmm. Right? Everybody got to go home. Nah, that's real. To, everybody go, go home to their own separate beds and, and, and families and, and there's different things going on in your family than his family, your family. It's just, that's just life. I don't think you regret anything. Nah, that's real. You know? Um... The nigga that shot him, he, re he regrets pulling that trigger. That's the nigga he regrets pulling that trigger. And like you said, with the cameras, they, they, they seen who, they know who did it. You in a mall, you think there's not cameras? Come on, man. That's why he got arrested. Now, I don't know the laws in Texas with the guns and shit. If it's an accident, you know, I don't know how this shit's going to play out. Because it wasn't done out of, because he didn't do nothing to get shot. So, of course, it, it, it wasn't like retaliation or I got a problem with this guy. So, let's just see what happens, man. It's just it's a fucked up incident in hip-hop. Another sad day in hip-hop. And um, everybody has to move on. 
Nah, I mean, it's as simple as that. It's another sad day in hip hop, and it's so sad. This is over a dice game. Like, over a dice game. And speaking of that, have you ever been involved in a dice game that just went crazy? Nah, nah. You know, them dice, dice games, they get winning, out of control. I'll I, I be winning when I play dice. Nah, you know, I'm not really a dice. We 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 we, we did a lot of CeeLo back in the days. And of course, you've heard stories or seen shit with niggas don't want to pay up. Niggas, you know, it's always some bullshit with dice. It's always some bullshit with gambling, period. You know? You know? It, you could be, it, it could be bullshit with anything, though. You could be playing a basketball game and it's some bullshit. It could be, this, this, you can't just say a dice game. This, a millions of times on the basketball court, niggas ain't, nigga got dunked on and got shot. Like, yo, you dunked on me, I'm gonna shoot you. Like, shit happens, man. It's just, you can't, you could play dice and walk away happy and, and having a good time. Shit happens in anything. There's gonna, sh some shit is gonna happen. You could go to a club, you could go to a club 30 times in your life, and one day you go to a club, the shit gets shot. You, it, shit happens, man. It doesn't, it, it, you can't say a dice game is the reason why, you know, it's, that was just something that was going on. You know, the reason was niggas had egos and that, when that, that see, that comes into play. That's the reason. The reason, mm -hmm. it's a human reason, not a game. Well, again, man, um, sad day in hip hop, you know, prayers to his family. Let's 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 end this thing before I let you up out of here. Let's end this thing on a positive note. You a football fan? Yo, man, let's go, man. What's popping, man? What we doing, man? <laughs> of course, <laughs> I'm a football fan, but the Giants, the Jets, you know, coming from New York, man, it's it's we gotta we gotta do better, man. But for the Super Bowl, is this gonna come yeah, out before the got? Super Bowl? Who I'm picking? Let's go. Yeah, Listen, who man, you got? I'm going with Jalen Hurts. I I I I was rocking with Jalen Hurts ever since. You know, he was at Alabama. They benched him. He went to Oklahoma. You know, I, he's always, when I when I seen him, I was like, yo, this kid right here is mature. Like, he didn't smile. Like, his face was always serious. He was always, he had that thing in him. You know what I'm saying? And we got to Philly. I was like, they're going to be a problem. And that nigga's a problem. But you can't ever count Patrick Mahomes. That dude right there. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be a good game. But... I I I'll put my money on the Eagles. I'll put my okay. money on the Eagles. I'm putting okay. my money on the Eagles. And, and I, and I, ain't, I, ain't, I ain't betting no 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 Mayweather money, but I'm betting on the Eagles. Believe that. You betting on the For Okay, sure. so the next time we sit down, we 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 gonna see hey, your prediction. Listen, man, you know, when you bet, you don't you, you don't scare you you not you ain't scared to lose. It's a bet. We just gonna have fun with it. Have a good game and let's see the Eagles rock these niggas. Watch. But one thing I will say, two black quarterbacks. That's the bigger picture. We got two black quarterbacks go. playing in the Super Bowl, man. That shit is dope. You know what I'm saying? Matter of fact, we should get a t-shirt that says support black quarterbacks. Because I love to see black quarterbacks, man. I, I just, I love to see that. You know what I'm saying? So may the best, may the best man win, may the best team win. But I'm going with the Philadelphia Eagles. Okay. You see your man um Tom Brady called to quits. What else he gonna do? You won seven, right? You won seven. You you ain't been looking too good. The, the last season he wasn't looking too good. Shut the fuck out. I what, what, I hate to see people when it's their time to go, don't go. Go, man. Chill. Mm -hmm. Go chill on the beach. You know, single dude now. You know what I'm saying? Still got love from the wifey. But he, he's do your thing, Brady. We, and then make room for other little niggas to come up. You know what I'm saying? Like, give somebody else a chance, man. You already did your, your one-two, man. It's over. You got seven. You, 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 you the goat. You drinking goat milk, nigga. Goat milk. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? You the goat. That's it. All right, speaking of goats, speaking of goats, we gonna we gonna end it. We gonna end it with my man John Jones, UFC. I hope you're a UFC fan. I'm not a UFC John fan, Jones. but I watch it. 
Shout out to my man Johnny Vogel. He's a crazy UFC feat. John Bone Jones. Johnny Bones Jones is coming back three years out of the octagon. Wasn't he wilding he out? Back. Wasn't he? He's one of those out there type of dudes. Everything, right? Like it's yeah, out there, yeah, right? Yeah, he out there. Okay, yeah. well, but listen. but in the octagon, it, it's no comparison. Who's he Best fighting? To ever do Who he gonna fight though? Cyril Gon, a dude named Cyril Gon, from mm. the UK. He's a monster. John stepping up to heavyweight. It's his first fight as a heavyweight. It's his first time back in the octagon after three years. People don't know if he got ring rust. He dominated the light heavyweight. Would you just said stepping up? I wouldn't step away for three years and then step up. That's, I mean, I don't know how he's training. I can't say that, but from my perspective, when I see boxers move up, he's not a boxer, but it's the same physical... I don't know, man. If you would have said he was stepping down, it would have been like, okay, he's, you know, you find a little nigga, a, a, a nigga lighter than you, it should be easier. Now it's an uphill battle because you you fighting a nigga heavier than you. And if you never fought a nigga heavier than you, all that training shit might not be the same power when a nigga hits you with that, that heavyweight punch. It's yeah. going to feel different. Yeah. So... You know, let's hope he don't before the, you know, let's hope he, you know, keep <laughs> keep his nose clean and we and we have a great fight, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, I'ma be rooting for my man. That's 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 my man right there. Shout to Johnny Bones Jones. John, I gotta get him on John there. Like Bones get him Jones. in that's that seat. That's a great name though. I love the name though. Yeah. I'm, and and that's my prediction. I know he's stepping up, but I'm riding with him. Okay. It's a well, bad yo, boy well, in the we octagon. Got, we gotta ride with the black man. There you go. <laughs> Yo, Fredro, it's been my pleasure, brother. You already know, man. Vlad, we out here. We outside, man. You already know, man. We got to do this again real soon. Peace and love. And keep doing your thing, my brother. No doubt. Salute. My man. One.